Hi, I'm Dr. Frank Feigenbaum. I'm a neurosurgeon and I specialize specifically in the treatment of spinal meningeal cysts. I went to medical school at Georgetown University and then stayed at Georgetown to complete a neurosurgical residency. After residency, I started specializing in spinal neurosurgery in particular and then even more subspecialized into the treatment of spinal meningeal cysts. Tarlov cysts are a type of spinal meningeal cyst. Well, a Tarlov cyst is a type of spinal meningeal cyst. This is a model of the spine, the, the lumbar part of the spine, which is from here to here, and then the sacrum part of the spine, or the tailbone. Inside the spine is a canal, and in that canal there's a sac, which is signified by this yellow tube here. And the covering of that sac is called the meninges, um, and hence cysts that arise from the covering of the spinal sac and the nerves that come off of it are called meningeal cysts. A Tarlov cyst is a cyst that arises from one of the nerve roots signified by these yellow offshoots here. Uh, these are all spinal nerve roots. We all have them in our spine. And sometimes one of those nerve roots becomes overfilled with fluid and that's a Tarlov cyst. And the cyst takes up a bunch of space in this canal here where normally there's just enough room for the nerves and when the cyst gets big enough it can press on the other nerves around it and cause symptoms. A Tarlov cyst occurs when one or more of these spinal nerve roots becomes overfilled with fluid. You can kind of think about it as a hose in your backyard that has a weak spot and when you turn the water on that section balloons up because the covering of the nerve root is weak in that, in that section. So in essence what happens is the nerve root becomes overfilled with fluid and since it's grouped together with other nerves around it, that cyst, which was a nerve root, but overfilled with fluid, takes up a whole bunch of space where normally there's only enough room for the nerves and it compresses other nerves around it and that can cause symptoms. These yellow branches are spinal nerve roots. And if we had a model that continued upward, we wouldn't just have nerve roots in the lumbar spine, they'd be in the thoracic and the cervical spine too. And since a Tarlov cyst is a spinal nerve root, you can get a Tarlov cyst anywhere in the sacral, lumbar, thoracic, or cervical spine. It turns out that the nerve roots higher up in the spine are separated from each other, as you can see here, and it's harder for a cyst of one nerve root to cause symptoms by compressing another. That's different in the sacrum, where all the nerve roots are grouped together. So if one of these nerve roots becomes a cyst, it can more easily push on other nerve roots around it and cause symptoms. The patient's symptoms depend on where in the spine the cyst is located and which nerves are getting pressed on. If a patient has a symptomatic cyst in the neck, then they'd probably have neck symptoms and so forth. The, the most common location for Tarlov cysts to be symptomatic is in the sacrum. And when the sacral nerve roots get compressed as a result of a Tarlov cyst, patients typically experience a specific constellation of symptoms. It's usually sacral pain uh, radiating to the buttock down the back of the leg to the foot. They can get numbness in those areas, weakness in the feet, particularly in pushing up or climbing stairs. Uh, they can get pain or numbness in the, the private areas, uh, bowel and bladder dysfunction, painful intercourse or sexual dysfunction, and in particular, difficulty sitting. They can't sit, there's no comfortable pos position to sit. Patients are constantly squirming in their chair, and the symptoms are made better by lying down. eighty percent of patients describe that once the symptoms begin they're progressive in other words they get worse over time the sitting discomfort in fact can be so severe that patients can't sit for any period of time comfortably and they carry special cushions with them to sit on wherever they go and uh, for example imagine not being able to sit right now and talk um, because it hurts so bad that you have to stand up and walk around patients can't sit through a meal 
uh, can't go sit through a movie, can't sit through church uh, on the pews, on the hard pew. Um, so it can be extremely debilitating. If patients have failed uh, non-operative management and their symptoms are getting worse or their symptoms are to the point where it's significantly limiting their quality of life, then surgery becomes an option. And the way I treat the cysts is with a surgery. And the surgery is from the back. Usually if the cysts are in the spinal canal, I approach the cysts from the back. And each cyst is a nerve. It's one of the spinal nerves. And you can't just remove them because you need those nerves to perform in important functions. So really the goal of the surgery is to get the fluid out of the nerve that's a cyst so that it's a normal sized nerve again that's not pushing on other nerves. And once that cyst is a normal sized nerve again, we wrap it with this material like a sleeve. And the sleeve contains the cyst and prevents it from re-expanding in the future and pushing on the nerves again. And I typically treat all the cysts in the sacral spinal canal and when I'm done, I want to see that there's no more pressure on the other nerves and that all the cysts that were nerves are now normal sized nerves again. The wrapping is permanent and I've never had a cyst, a Tarlow cyst that I've treated with wrapping uh, recur. Other smaller cysts can become bigger and cause symptoms over time, but it's extremely unusual. Um, I really feel like the treatment that I've developed, the wrapping, uh, is superior and I have statistical evidence to prove it. My statistics are um, that 70 to 80 percent of patients get significant improvement in sacral, buttock, and leg symptoms, including the ability to sit longer. 60 to 70 percent get improvement in the symptoms in the private areas and 50 to 60 percent get improvement in the bladder and the bowel symptoms. That's data from over 800 patients that we followed for two years after surgery. It, it can be difficult for patients. There's not a lot of information out there on spinal meningeal cysts or Tarlow cysts in particular. One good source of information is my internet site. It has some good information on there and also some links to chapters that I've written on the topic. Call my office directly. My nurses will be happy to give you information on the topic. Another good source is the Tarlow Cyst Disease Foundation, which is in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. The advantage of having a practice that's specifically focused on one category of spinal disease is that it offers me the opportunity to provide more complete care for that disease entity. In other words, um, when patients come to our practice with symptomatic spinal meningeal cysts, they get a team approach to their therapy. That team includes uh, surgeons, it includes uh, nurses who are trained in the uh, management of patients with symptomatic spinal meningeal cysts, like Tarlov cysts. There's anesthesiologists, pain management doctor, physical therapists, and so on, all who've had experience with our patients, who understand our patients, how they're different from other types of patients, and who are able to provide more tailored care to their disease. And I think that that is the best way to provide care for patients with spinal meningeal cysts because they really are a different category of, of patients.